Hey friends, so today we're gonna continue talking about um, different ways to sell your bag and different ways that I've done this. And we're talking about me selling the medium satchel from Saddleback Leather in tobacco. And this is a very worn in, full of patina, beautiful bag that is going to hopefully make somebody else happy. And in a previous video I talked about how to take pictures and I kind of started talking about my favorite formats to sell a bag, which would be eBay or Facebook in the specialty groups. Um, and so I want to talk about using, let's do this one, using PayPal. So uh, in PayPal, if you've ever sent money, there'll be two options. It says friends and family, or it will say services and goods. So uh, I'm only going to speak of my experience and what I feel comfortable with, and you're going to decide what you're comfortable with, and we're going to keep it at that. It's fine if you don't agree with me, and you can comment below if you don't. Be nice. But um, if I've been... I, excuse me, if I've exchanged a lot of emails with somebody, like uh, recently Cindy, hi Cindy, she purchased a um, iPad mini carbon sleeve for me and we did friends and family because we're friends. We're always, we're not always talking, but we'll talk now and then about our thoughts about bags and I'm aware of her, she's aware of me, we are not really strangers to each other. So she clicked friends and family on Facebook and that meant that I was shipping my iPad mini to a friend and we avoided a service charge. I would strongly recommend using the services and goods if you're shipping a leather bag to someone you've never talked to. You don't know who they are. They don't know who you are because how that's gonna work, and I don't know every detail about it, but if one person in that exchange really drops the ball, PayPal has you covered for um, a certain amount of legal fees and a certain amount of like the litigation between you two of getting the bag back or the good or the money back and again I'm kind of fumbling because I really don't know everything but I would just say it it's more of a protection to go through the services and goods as opposed to friends and family so there's my little thought on that um, <laughs> some true Saddleback Mother fans will know this one don't write DCB in the memo line of PayPal. You will, the whole transaction will be red flagged and it will be a big mess to untangle it because apparently um, that DCB, which stands for dark coffee brown, which is the color of Saddleback Leather leather, um, is something that's used in bombs. So don't do it. Just don't do it. Resist the urge. Don't even write in the memo line. Well, sometimes I'm like, thank you, but more likely I'm not. Um, if you purchase something from somebody using PayPal, pay them right away, pull over, stop in the airport, just get the payment to them. They're waiting on you, they're waiting on you to write sold on the listing on Facebook, they're waiting on you to make a shipping label, just pay right away. And I have had, I would say 99% of the time, good experiences. But sometimes, I mean, if you can't pay, tell them. Say, I can't, I'm not in a spot where I can pay today. I'm stuck, I'm not, I don't have the app on my phone, something like that. Give them a heads up. Um, and don't take payment plans. I've seen this on some of the specialty groups where people will be like, hey, I can't afford it, but you can pay me this much per month. No, we're not, we're not those kinds of people. Like, just make it a fast exchange. I'm not going to deal with people who want payment plans. Nope. I will, um, no. Not, it's, the risk is not there. I don't want to deal with that. And that's today's opinion. Okay. Uh, here's a did you know. So I talk about Saddleback Leather on this video a lot because that's one of my favorite companies. And so this is a Saddleback Leather tip. You can, uh, Saddleback Leather has some of their products on Amazon. And so you can use your Amazon gift cards to buy Saddleback Leather. It's genius. It's simple, but it's genius. Uh, let's see. Here's how I actually make money to buy leather bags. Thrift stores. I will visit a thrift store. I moved, so I'm not near that many thrift stores anymore. But normally I'll go maybe once a week to a thrift store, check out their purse section. 
I've been, I've been so exposed to leather bags and different brands that I kind of can pick up on which ones are valuable. I'll stand there in store or sit down, pull up eBay and search the exact same bag and name and model. And if it's selling for $4 at Goodwill and $75 on eBay, I will buy it and sell it for 45. I could sell it at 75, but I don't want to wait around. I want that fast money. And I've done that the last four years. That's the majority of where my money comes. I'm just flipping bags on eBay. Oh, here we go. A horror story. That's what it says. Uh, I am, I don't smoke. I'm not upset with people who smoke, but I have learned that I need to ask, is this from a smoking home? And uh, one time I bought a Saddleback leather pouch that smelled like smoke. And I had asked the girl, you know, it smells like smoke. Are you, is this from a smoking home? And she goes, well, yes, I smoke, but it's always been in the back closet. And it, it just, it gets everywhere. I'm not allergic. It's just a preference. I don't like the smell. And so if this has ever been, um, ask the question before you buy something, even if it's on eBay, message the seller, is this from a smoking home? A home that smokes. And if it's yes, then if your preference is like mine, smoke doesn't come out of leather. I tried using carbon, baking soda, newspaper, sunlight, put it in the freezer for weeks. And I, uh, I was really bummed because I really liked the little pouch from Saddleback Leather. And I had to sell it. And you know what I did? I just closed that it smelled like smoke. And you know who bought it? A smoker. He was completely fine with it. It was perfect. But I have not been successful in ever getting any smell of smoke out of leather. So heads up, it doesn't come out. And in the comments, you can say maybe it does, but uh, no, it really doesn't. You can mask it, but it still stinks. Excuse me. I don't want to say stinks because I don't want to offend. It still smells like smoke. Um, also, ask if they have perfume or if the bag smells like perfume or if they're a perfume wearing person. I have some perfumes and I actually don't really wear them when I'm wearing my favorite bags because I don't want my bags that I might sell one day to smell like perfume. Uh, and if you're allergic to pets, ask if they have pets. Okay. All right, I don't know what that just said. Let's move on. I already talked about this in um, the previous video, but there are specialty groups on Facebook. If you're going to sell a bag that's a Dooney and Burke, sell it in a Dooney and Burke specialty bag or specialty group. Saddleback leather, sell it in a Saddleback leather group. Love 41, Love 41 group. Rough and tumble, rough and tumble group. Now, some people sell on Craigslist. I have never done this. I normally feel like people use Craigslist to sell their bag when it was gifted to them and they're unaware of all these like specialty groups. So if you're looking for a bag, consider looking on Craigslist because you might find it for a better deal. Because if I get a bag as a gift, I might sell it for a little bit cheaper because I never really put any money in it. That's a tip. And uh, I do look on, um, oh, I know I read this. I'm saying if you're buying a bag, look on specialty groups. And eBay set yourself alerts. I get an email once a day from certain companies or certain types of bags that I'm looking for if someone's posted it. And uh, you know what? what? I'm gonna add one more. Ask people you know that have bags if they're willing to sell. I have sold so many of my bags from somebody messaging me and be like, I know you have that bag. Are you thinking of selling it? When you are, please let me know. It's awesome. In my mind, I'm like, great, I already have like a buyer just sitting over there waiting for me. Okay. How to buy a bag. Let's jump into this. I would say research and take your time. The combination of those two things are going to make you a very informed buyer. It's going to make you less likely to return the item. It's going to make you less likely to want to sell it because you're so excited about this thing that you've been wanting. Um, I have purchased items that, uh, I don't know, they are launched by a company and I buy them that afternoon, but I'm normally in a position where I've already done research and I know what I want and I know what I need and I have a budget ready. Um, I like to sit 
ready with uh, some cash just so I can make those decisions and I'm not having to sell something quickly. I kind of like being in that good middle position. Um, I would say the number one thing I'm doing for my friends on, in, on the inter interweb is I want to provide a service that you're informed. I don't want to push you to buy anything. I don't want to make it seem like I have everything and so you need to as well. I want you to be informed so you can buy something that you've never visited at a store. So I'm saying research on Instagram. You see these notes? Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, eBay, um, and find a price that you're excited about and you can afford and just start saving. I don't know. I've noticed a lot of people have been uh, saying the same comment a lot to me that I am a bad influence, and but they, they're lighthearted about it. I'm a bad influence. Um, their husbands say I shouldn't follow you anymore on Instagram. And it's lighthearted, but I never wanted to be somebody that made you feel pressured to buy something. Um, I'm okay if I make you excited about a new product, but um, take your time. Sell some bags. Get some bags out of your closet you're not using. Sell them. Be excited about the money you made. And even take your time. Things end up on the used market all the time. Um, and uh, I think that could really jump me into this one point. I do not like to buy things that are limited or on auction. I get way too stressed out. I don't really understand the whole game on Facebook when people have auctions. Um, I think that you can get really impulsive and emotional and you're paying too much. And uh, limited things don't resell. There's no market. I mean, if it's, you know, some specialty groups, I think the limited things could resell, but I don't know if they'll ever really resell at that high auction price. Does that make sense? So I like to sit back and wait for something to either be a full stock item on a website where they're like, this is a prototype and we're selling it at the auction. I'll just wait until it's not a prototype or I'll just pass. I don't want that stress. Um, let's say I wrote, if there is a huge sale, someone is bound to sell a catch and release. Don't feel pressured to buy fast. Take your time. So sometimes, um, I don't know, uh, people will have, some companies will have these items that are just all of a sudden for sale and there's only 50 of them and everybody buys them in the one hour. Just sit down, wait, relax. Write in that comment, I will buy one from somebody if they wanna sell. Therefore, you buy yourself like four or five days to think about it and if they come back to you, you can say no. Like, don't feel impulsive. I know that's easier said than done. Okay, when you are doing an auction, this is what I wrote, ask auctioneer rules when the auction closes. I had an issue with one company and we handled it and we have moved on and we're all fine, but I played by their rules and they changed the rules at the end. It was like, instead of nine o'clock, it was nine o'clock in like four seconds. And if you do an auction, stick to eBay. eBay's got great auctions. It's a computer, there's no person, no user error. Okay, so that was that thought is done. Don't buy for status reasons or the latest and greatest. Find an actual need in your life and stay picky on the solution. That is a great quote, Danae, that I wrote myself like seven months ago. Um, I don't really think my bags have much of a status appeal in my mind. There's very much just a lovely, like, I really, really like this design and the quality of leather. But I can say, you, I can I can see why people would think there's like a status with the bag you're carrying. Um, nobody thinks about other people that much. Does that make sense? Like, you might think wearing this bag will make you people like you more. I, I think if you have a great personality and you're warm and friendly, people will like you more. I don't think it matters about your bag. Um, but I like to find a need in my life, a hole in my life of a function that a bag could do and then I start researching. And when I find a bag that fits that function, everything's better. That's why I do this. Does that make sense? Okay, I just liked that. Find an actual need in your life and stay picky on the solution. 
Uh, I would say sometimes you can buy something for cheap at Target or Goodwill or somewhere that is the exact size and shape and style of the bag you like. And so buy it for $20, $30, whatever, and use it and see if, is that the right size before you go and buy a $400 one? Because what if you buy the $400 one and use it for three months and realize it's the wrong size of, at the end of the day? Now you have a used bag that you can't really resell at a high value. So if you buy it cheap, you can actually just see, is that the right size? Is this the right wallet? Is this the right um, style for me, crossbody or backpack or tote? And then maybe you only lost $30 in the whole exchange, but maybe you spent $30 and now you can go buy the one at full price and you really know it's what you needed. Um, ask, question, ask questions to the company or seller or others from experience. Ask Facebook when sales happen. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so if you're gonna buy a leather bag um, and it's a company that you've never really experienced, go to those specialty groups and say, how frequently does this company have sales? When can I expect like a sale? So I really love GG New York. I need to do a review on them. Um, I have several of their bags, but they have an amazing like July, August sale. Everything's 60% off. It's phenomenal. But I know that from experience, but if you just visited their website, you might be like, this is a great bag, I'm gonna buy it. They're like, no, 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 wait. Wait, and there's a better sale. Um, and then this Facebook specialty groups ask a thousand questions. I love it when somebody says, I'm new to this group and I have a million questions. The whole group really kind of rallies around and just makes them feel supported, makes them feel like they can make a good decision. And um, sometimes I post, hey, I did a review on that. And I post my link to my video. I don't always do that though. Um, Measure the devices you want to fit in the bag. I'll, if you have a 13 inch laptop, I mean, measure the actual length of the laptop. 13 inches is diagonal, but measure that length and compare it to the dimensions of the leather bag. It sounds simple, but a lot of people forget to do that. And respect the return policy of any company. I haven't always done this right. And I've kind of asked customer service to work around with me and not, not every company does. So research that, set an alarm on your phone, make your decision, don't buy a box, put it in the back room and forget about it. And um, return policies are great because you can really look at a bag, wear it around your house and you get all your money back and you already experienced a bag and yeah, you, you know what a return policy is. Okay, here's one. Colorful bags don't resell well. So be sure it's a forever bag. I buy normally brown and leather bags, uh, brown, black, um, maybe a little red, but I never buy like bright, bright red or pink or green or blue. Those don't resell well. If it's your forever bag, I'm not going to stop you. But please know if you buy a bag and it's on clearance because it's bright green, it's not gonna sell on eBay really well. Resell is important. Consider if you are a picky person. Okay, <clears throat> if you're somebody like me, don't buy full retail price. Wait, buy things used. Buy things, um, I don't know. I don't buy always brand new because I can't sell for brand new. So I buy used and old and discounted so I can just sell it at that price or a little bit higher and I kind of come out ahead. If I sell a bag for, excuse me, if it, Cost 200 and I paid 200, I can't sell it for 200. If I bought, it's, if the retail's 200 and I bought it for 150, I can sell it for 150 because it's still a deal to the next person. I feel like I'm over explaining, but I wanted to make sure you get that. All right, um, let's see. You can email the, the companies and say, is there a coupon or a promotional coming up? I've done that, that works. Take your time, talk to friends, talk to your spouse. You should not be divided with your spouse. I don't think they always understand our love for leather bags, but just keep them involved with the process. Show them your Instagram photos that you found of the bag you like. Show them, hey, this would be a great birthday gift. 
talk about it ongoing, not right when you wanna buy it. And then they're kind of like, oh, you've been thinking about this for a while, go for it, I'm excited for you. Are you guys realizing how dark it's getting here? Sorry. Um, I think you can still see me though. Oh, here's one question. Ask if the label was different, the brand of the bag, was it, if it's different, um, would you still buy it? If a better bag was out there and you could afford it, would you buy it? Um, let's see. I think that's an interesting thought. Like, if you're buying a bag, but you wish you could really, really buy this one, why are you buying this bag? I sometimes now tell myself, if this bag's 100 and this is 400, if I don't buy this, I just saved $100 off this one. It's a coupon. And that might not logically make sense, but in a way you're not spending money on a temporary solution. You're waiting longer and you're saving up for the one that you really, really want. But then I can't really talk because I just got my favorite bag in the world as a gift. Oh, I got spoiled rotten this Christmas. I can't handle it. I don't know. I'm really excited. That's coming up, by the way. Um, okay, so this is my last note, and I'm going to make it another video really quick. Hold on. Thanks for watching.